Do you believe that Ghosn's arrest, while valid, perhaps, has been overdone in some capacity to remove him from the picture to get this deal done? I, I think you framed it just right. That is clearly what happened. And, and by the way, uh, congratulations. I, I think you must slept there in the studio. I, th I, I just turned you off uh, on 5 p.m. last night. There you are at 5 a.m. Uh, you know, the Vogue's had a number one song, I think, in 1965 called Five O'Clock World. That must be your theme song. But <laughs> that's exactly, that is exactly right. Is Carlos Ghosn was, uh, was set up for this. Uh, if there was some kind of misconduct, it's not clear what that was. The, you don't get imprisoned for this kind of a question as he was getting a salary considerably less than any of his peers were making. And there's just a, a lot of suspicion, of course, that this had something to do with Japan Inc., that he was going in to replace the CEO of Nissan. He was the chairman of Nissan. He was going to replace the CEO for some faltering performance after he pulled off a rescue. And there are questions as to whether or not the board, the board cleared, the Nissan board had cleared a a compensation plan for him that hadn't been clear, revealed to shareholders yet, and how that was, but he hadn't gotten the penny of this extra bonus compensation. So it was, that was just crazy. There was certainly something to do with resentment of, of, of the control that Renault had uh, in Nissan. 20 years ago, uh, Carlos Ghosn had uh, pulled off a remarkable recovery for, uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for Nissan by uh, taking Renault and buying into it. And uh, they missed that opportunity. Now they resent it because the production is twice as high as, uh, as, the, as the production of, of Renault. It's, uh, so that's the frustration. Furthermore, uh, they've got, uh, I don't know, about a 43% control, the, the French do, of, of Renault and uh, of, of Nissan. There's a lot of resentment for that. Yeah, I mean, and, and it is a situation now where Nissan may be then left out in the cold as these two European giants. You also wonder, is there an element of sort of, I don't want to call it nationalism, Jeff, but certainly what we're seeing is this populism that is not just here. It's in, it's in Europe as well. You've got Italy and France. Yeah, they've had their differences, but they are still members in Europe, maybe leaving out Japan as well. I don't think this is just a CEO story. It almost feels like a national story in some ways. Uh, it, it absolutely is a national story. And that was the part of the Carlos Ghosn bit, of course, was the national pride uh, uh, and some resentment of the French control of Nissan. And now, similarly, you're right, the Italian link to uh, Fiat is, a, of course, a, 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 at one point, I, I think seven out of ten cars uh, back in the 70s uh, were Fiats that were sold in Italy. And Fiat, with Maserati, uh, all these great brands that they have there, that they're doing much better than they were previously. And, uh, of course, they lost their CEO, and, uh, and, and uh, Sergio Marcioni, and that is a sad tragedy that was part of the backdrop here, the human tragedy of having Carlos Ghosn uh, wrongly imprisoned as, uh, with these sequential charges, uh, and then um, Marcioni having uh, died by surprise, and it was a huge blow to the company. But then you also have the national link, as you point out, the, the French ownership of 15 percent uh, tied into, uh, into the control of Renault. Uh, which, now, this will be diluted just like Nissan's smaller stake, uh, which is about 15 percent, will be diluted in, 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 back into Renault. So, yeah, the, it's, you talk about game, you know, people feeling some grief over the last episode of, the, of Game of Thrones. You're absolutely right. That's what's going on here. It's the personalities that drive this yeah. at least as much as the strategy. And, and I'm going to ask a question. I used to work for the Japanese years ago, decades ago. I worked for Mitsubishi Bank. And wonderful people, but they, they, Carlos Ghosn was not Japanese, and he would never be Japanese. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Do you believe that the fact that he was really a Brazilian, Lebanese, French citizen, he really had three different nationalities, that that background not doomed him with Nissan and in Japan, but certainly did not help him? That he has no communication, he's put in a prison cell, that he was put in in solitary confinement, it's absurd, uh, of course. And people will talk about how you don't get out of it. It's like a roach motel of justice. You don't get out of a Japanese uh, a, 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 a prison cell unless you confess. They have a 99% conviction rate. How about that? But still, these conditions are way more onerous than we saw for Tokyo Electric after uh, the tsunami problem with the nuclear uh, uh, meltdown, the nuclear plant, or with Takata airbags or other misconduct in Japan. We didn't see this kind of harsh treatment. So, yes, I do think there's a nationality yeah. thing going on and some sort of a backlash. But what, part of this untold story here, too, is we don't have this kind of cultural clash uh, when we're looking at both fiat 
uh, Fiat Chrysler, which is run by this guy, John Elkman, who, who's uh, as, as international as, as Carlos Ghosn was. He's born in the U.S. Uh, he was, went to college uh, as an engineer in Italy. He, he went to uh, uh, for uh, study at high school in France, and his primary school years were in England. And he, the guy speaks four or five languages fluently, and a very elegant 43-year-old who is an Agnelli family member, a grandson of uh, Johnny Agnelli. And once, uh, even though he knows the industry cold, he's sort of trying to divest the, the family's interests. On the other hand, you have the, the CEO of Fiat, who's also a, uh, uh, I mean, the, C, the CEO uh, of, 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 uh, of Fiat, a very elegant guy. Uh, and that guy, too, he's in his mid, probably uh, mid-60s, uh, but no, not in a desire to leave. So you can see, but they, they share a lot of common cultural heritage and that, uh, that the, the fluent French conversations that they have is kind of thing that, uh, you didn't see this the cultural yeah. uh, uh, comfort level uh, with Carlos Ghosn. And when you are on that global game of CEO stage, those types of things, just being able to communicate in the same language matters the same language, a lot. They, matters they, a they, lot. And they'd had furtive conversations before, yeah. uh, but it was a little harder. Sergio Marchione was, uh, uh, it seemed a lot warmer and friendlier than Carlos Ghosn, but the reality was he was a very tough negotiator, too. He served as sort of a mentor to this guy, uh, uh, John Elkman. But uh, uh, this uh, Jean-Dominique Sennard, the, the CEO uh, uh, right now of, of uh, Fiat, has a, a, a tremendous uh, uh, comfort level with the government. So... Uh, he was able to uh, to share his yeah. concerns with Macron. He's been an early Macron backer, so this is likely to uh, have a good deal of support from the French government. And both companies are calling this a friendly deal there. So this is likely to go through. Now, neither one of them has a big presence in China, so they're not helping each other out that way. And Nissan can be a kind of a little bit of a spoiler, spoiler in terms of the intellectual property that Nissan shares in electronics and electronic vehicles and, and powertrain systems with Nissan shares that, uh, uh, of course, uh, and, and that's going to be hard if they, uh, if they don't like, uh, you know, don't, don't, why are they going to help a competitor yeah. out here, basically, so they can uh, sort of mess up the, uh, the deal a little bit on that I, side. I, I